Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug scopolamine. Scopolamine belongs to the cholinergic muscarinic antagonist drug classification. To get a good understanding of how the drug works, let's break down the words in that classification. So cholinergic antagonist means that scopolamine inhibits acetylcholine from binding to its receptor sites. Acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter involved in our parasympathetic nervous system, also known as the rest and digest nervous system. So scopolamine inhibits or decreases our body's rest and digest functions. What happens when you inhibit the rest and digest functions is actually very similar to what you see when you stimulate the sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight nervous system. This means that scopolamine causes effects like decreased salivation, and increased heart rate. And finally, the word muscarinic means that the drug is targeting smooth and sometimes cardiac muscle, like in the blood vessels and in the heart, and not targeting skeletal muscle. There are many uses for scopolamine because of its broad effect on the nervous system. Here are just some of its primary uses. Excess oral and respiratory secretions, usually in end-of-life patients, excessive drooling, common in patients with Parkinson's disease, bradycardia, or low heart rate, and motion sickness. Because there are so many uses and effects of scopolamine, it also means that there are a lot of side effects to the drug. To remember the side effects of scopolamine, it helps to think of how the drug works. Remember, scopolamine inhibits the rest and digest nervous system, so you can expect many of the fight or flight nervous system effects as side effects. For example, even if we give scopolamine for bradycardia, it means that tachycardia and heart palpitations are still possible side effects. It's also possible for patients to experience constipation due to decreased GI motility, urinary retention due to the relaxation of the bladder, along with dry mouth and dry mucous membranes. And because of the many side effects, there are some cases where we want to avoid the use of scopolamine. For example, we want to avoid scopolamine in tachycardic patients, patients with GI obstructions, patients with urinary retention, and more. Always remember to assess and monitor for side effects of scopolamine. Watch for changes in heart rate like tachycardia and irregularities, and monitor for regular intake and output. Scopolamine can be given orally by injection, such as subcutaneous IM or IV, and by transdermal patch. During end-of-life care, scopolamine is often administered by the subcutaneous route, often in a subcutaneous line. The transdermal patch is often given for nausea and motion sickness. And that's about it for scopolamine. If you would like to try a free nervous system drug quiz, I've placed a link in the video description for that. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.